42% of people reported feeling confident. 42% is so low. So obviously this is something we can all work on. Confident people are more likely to get jobs. They're more likely to make friends. They're also more likely to be happier. Studies show that confidence and happiness go hand in hand. Hello, my name is Sarah and welcome to Mirrors, the podcast and video series where we learn about ourselves, learn to love ourselves, and learn to create a life we love to live. Today we're talking about confidence, okay? One of the most powerful attributes you can have, in my opinion, is confidence. So we're going to talk all about it. I've got my makeup here next to me. You can't see any of it, but it's all here. Today I thought we'd have some fun with some purples. You know when you meet someone and you can just kind of sense that they have this like magnetic aspect to them. Like you just want to keep talking to them. You find them really interesting. That is their energy. It doesn't matter what they look like, right? It is their energy and it's how they feel to be around. Whenever you meet someone that's magnetic like that, I usually find that they are very confident people and people who know their worth, but they know their worth humbly. And I think that's one of the biggest things between genuine confidence and sort of the superficial confidence. Superficial confidence ends up manifesting itself into they think they're better than other people. And so they kind of talk down on other people, you know, make you feel a little bit insecure about yourselves. Like they just don't make you feel good to talk to. That's not who I'm talking about. That is also not what I think of in terms of like real genuine confidence. Like when I think of confidence, real inner confidence, it is quiet. It is humble. It knows that other people are different and also worthy. It knows other people's worth and they still know their own worth. Genuine confidence is not needing to put other people down to raise yourself up. It is not needing to prove that you are making the best decisions, that you are the best at this or the best at life. It is not this like competitive drive to be better than other people. That is not confidence. Confidence is knowing what you're good at, knowing your strengths, knowing your weaknesses, and also being able to support other people in their strengths and recognize those strengths in others, even if they're different than your strengths, even if they're one of your weaknesses. I myself, like the majority of people in this world, have struggled with my own confidence before, both in my physical appearance and my personality. I think we all, as we get older, just kind of grow into ourselves more and we go through so many different periods of change. And I think for me, sometimes I'll be like, well, I'm a very different version of myself now. What if they don't like this version of myself? And the answer to that is, who the f cares? <laughs> like, to be honest, who cares? You are the only version of you. There will never be another person like you. And so it doesn't matter what you're doing. There is nobody who is going to do whatever you wanna do in life in the way that you would do it. There is only one you. And I think that when you can cultivate this confidence and when you can cultivate just this inner knowing that you are worthy of love and worthy of friendship and worthy of admiration without taking it away from others, I think like that's the key to happiness and also the key to being magnetic, truly. And just being one of those people who good things happen to and who people wanna be around. And it's all an energetic shift. I have some practical tips for you about cultivating confidence and cultivating that inner worth, that inner self-worth that we all deserve to have. And that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. These are things that I have done myself, which have helped me to raise my own confidence, to help me to know my own worth and to help me to love myself even despite being around people that might be a little bit different than me. My tip that is a nice starting point fake it until you make it. This is with anything, right? If you're trying to manifest something, one of the easiest ways you can do that is by faking it until you make it. When I was a kid, I had the biggest imagination. Like I would pretend things all day long. I had rocks on the side of my house and I used to pretend they were dinosaur teeth and that I was a dental hygienist and I would clean their dinosaur teeth. And I would literally like be able to see the dinosaur like through and through. And then when I got into like middle school and I was dealing with not having a lot of friends or not having a lot of like support, I, this is gonna sound so sad, but I would literally pretend I had friends. <laughs> 
Like in my head, like if I was doing something alone, I would just pretend that I was doing it with someone else. And honestly, I think it's why I, at a young age, was like pretty decent at manifesting because my imagination has always been so strong. I've always been able to like picture myself in another reality that isn't where I currently am. And then if you believe in the law of attraction and manifestation, you know that like, then that's what comes next. Like just the physical reality matches itself because you're literally tuning yourself into that. But this works with confidence too. So let's say you are going to a party and you don't really know that many people there and you're like, girl, I am not feeling it. I am scared. I am nervous. I don't know if I'm feeling my outfit. I don't know if I'm feeling myself. I don't know what I'm feeling besides scared and nervous. That's okay. You're allowed to feel those things and still be a confident person. To embody that confidence, right? To embody that inner like, I know I got this. How would someone who is confident act going into a party? How would someone who is confident feel going into a party? They'd feel calm. They'd feel at peace. They'd go up to people. They'd say hi. They'd introduce themselves. They'd walk in. They'd smile at people. They would mingle when they felt necessary. They would also be okay being alone if that happened. And it wouldn't be weird because they're confident, right? They, they feel like they can own a room. So faking it till you make it is just by kind of like recognizing what that confident person would do in that situation. If it's a speech, like for school or for work, you have to like talk in front of people. Just be like, okay, what would a confident person do right now? They would get up there and they'd own it. They'd own the stage, they would breathe, they wouldn't talk too fast, they wouldn't talk too slow, they wouldn't get all weird and jittery. They would just know, okay, I got this, I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna kill it. Now, you still might feel jittery, you still might feel anxious, you still might feel like you're freaking out, but if you're embodying what that confident person would do, you'd still go up there and you would speak in an okay pace, in an okay tone, you'd make eye contact, you'd smile, you'd have presence, you'd own the room. Even if you're like shitting your pants, you can still do all of that. I speak from experience. I used to be told that I was a very good public speaker and the way I hated public speaking, like I would go up there and I'd black out. I wouldn't even know what I said, but everyone would be like, oh my God, you're so good at talking in front of people. And I'd be like, ew, why do you think that? It was just because I would pretend and I would get up there and I would embody what speakers would do. I almost looked at it as like acting, right? Like I was fulfilling the role of a public speaker. And I think you can do that in terms of anything when it comes to confidence, like fulfill that role, right? Be an actor. I always think of that episode of Friends with Joey when he says he can go work in a restaurant with Monica and they were like, well, have you ever been a waiter? And he's like, no, but I'm an actor. It's like a role. Just be an actor. You can do anything. As long as you're an actor, you can do it all. The second piece of advice I have for you is find Finding your inner peace. Confidence comes with a sense of peace and security. When I was meditating, actually, I wrote in my notes app, I'm gonna read it. Safety and security is not a plan. It's not a thought. It's not an amount of money in your bank account or a job or a 401k. Safety is a feeling. Security is a feeling. And it can be all of those things, but it can also be as simple as laying on the ground and feeling the way the earth pushes up into your spine as gravity pushes you down into it. Safety and security feels like being in bed on a rainy day or a tight hug from the person you love most. It's a feeling we can tap into to every day by ourselves with nothing but just our bodies. Safety and security is a feeling like anything else. Anything that we want, right? It's just a feeling. Abundance, like prosperity, wealth, a feeling. Security and safety, a feeling. Peace is just a feeling. And so you don't really need anything in your external surroundings to give you peace. You can just become peaceful. You can just embody peace without needing any like external thing to happen. You can still just be at peace. And I think confident people, one thing that's very noticeable about them is how at peace they seem. Their energy is just calm. They're not trying to make you like them. They're not trying to be perceived in a specific way. They're not overly concerned about what people think of them but at the same time they're still respectful of other people's feelings and like aware of their surroundings and aware of the way other people respond to things like I don't think confidence comes with like this inability to see other people's perspectives or to respond to other people's social cues or feelings like I think true confidence gives you the space to recognize someone 
having a feeling to be empathetic towards that but to not take it personally like at least in my opinion that's like the ultimate level of confidence is like okay I see that this person is hurt I may have said something that hurt their feelings so I'm going to address that I'm going to word things in a way that gives them space to feel more comfortable but at the same time I'm not going to take it personally and be like well oh my god I'm such an idiot I hurt their feelings you know what I mean there's definitely a balance there to cultivate that inner peace I think it really starts just with like daily things what do you do that disrupts your peace I know for me like scrolling on social media sometimes can disrupt my peace so I'll definitely limit like my scroll time or like who I follow on social media because you know sometimes you just follow people that I don't know whether it's that they meet a societal beauty standard that you don't feel like you meet and so it makes you insecure or if they like are married and you're insecure that you're not married yet or if they are really wealthy and you're insecure that you're not met yet you know what I'm saying like I think you know we're we live in a world where we're always going to be triggered and I don't think being triggered is a bad thing but I think sometimes we can limit how much we interact with certain people or certain things if it does make us really feel like off kilter and disrupts our peace and so I think just like not following your ex on social media or not following like your old friend that you guys had a really rough falling out and like you kind of like hate stalk each other like that's not healthy and that's not protecting your peace. Or listening to music that makes you feel really sad. I like I know so many people that love listening to like really sad music like on the regular. I am all here for a good like cry session, like a nice little cry moment with some sad music. I'm all here for that. But like on an everyday basis, why are we doing that? You know what I mean? Like like why are we just doing that like in our car on the way to like a social gathering, you know? In your room alone, like that's one thing. But like just like always out here surrounding yourself with sadness like you're just gonna feel sad you know what I mean so protect your peace like limit who you follow limit how much time you're on social media um recognize what makes you feel really anxious or what makes you feel very like insecure off kilter and stop doing that my next piece of advice is look good feel good baby and I think that a little routine a little a couple of steps before you leave the house to feel your best can go such a long way if you have a shirt that just makes you feel so freaking good, right? We all have that one shirt that just makes them feel like, okay, that's me, who are you talking to? Put that shirt on, you know what I mean? Like wear that shirt regularly. I have this pair of jeans that I put on my body and I don't know why I do it because it cuts into me and makes it hard for me to breathe. That doesn't make me feel confident and not for any beauty standard, like not for, oh, I should be smaller. No, 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 Truly just like physical comfort, I can't breathe, this hurts. That's not gonna make you feel confident. Wear things that make you feel comfortable and confident. So like the material is comfortable, it fits you well. Um, if you love the way you look in purple eyeshadow, for example, that is the color of the eyeshadow for the day apparently, wear purple eyeshadow more often. If you are noticing that you are just like not feeling good about yourself or you're not feeling good about life, take little steps to get you just feeling a little bit better, right? Like do those little things. It could be a skincare routine, it could be a meal, it could be an outfit. Do the things that make you feel confident and look good, feel good. When you feel like you look good, you feel better about yourself, you present yourself in a more confident way. I have two more tips, we're getting there. The way you talk about yourself and the way you talk about others is so incredibly important. And that is what brings me to my next tip. How do you talk about yourself to other people? Like that whole self-deprecating thing, like Ugh, I'm ugly or I'm poor, like, that is so yesterday. We are not doing that anymore. It's just not doing anything good for you. It is self-deprecating. It is also like just not nice to your brain. It is not nice to your soul. It is not nice to your feelings. And even if you think it's a joke, on some level, you might believe it a little bit or your, your body or your brain might think you believe it a little bit. Talk about yourself lovingly. Talk about yourself like you talk about your best friend. Talk about yourself like you talk about your sister, like someone, well, maybe not your sister. I don't know how you talk about your sister. But talk about yourself in a loving, kind way, not a way that is consistently self-deprecating and mean. Affirmations can be really helpful with this too. Like, if you don't even know where to start, I would highly suggest starting with some affirmations. Um, I think I'm gonna release an affirmations track 
that you can listen to if you are at all interested. But there are also plenty on YouTube, which I listen to like literally every single morning because they just get you in a really good headspace and they just get you feeling better. There's actually neuroscience behind affirmations also. Like you are literally creating new neural pathways and new self-perception when you are doing affirmations that go against your typical negative self-talk. So if you're consistently saying that you're unlucky and then you start saying every single day, I am lucky, you are creating a new neural pathway and that new self-image. And if you do it eventually and you're also undoing all of that old stuff, you can like shift the way you even look at yourself, which I think is so important in confidence. And confidence is all about how you look at yourself. So really it's all about undoing all of those negative things that we tell ourselves every single day about ourselves. So really like start to notice your negative self-talk. Whenever you hear yourself talking negatively about yourself, just like take a second and register, hey, I just said something negative about myself and then correct it with like the opposite thing. So let's say, like I said, you said you're unlucky. Like correct that with I am so lucky. Or let's say you said that you feel ugly. Correct that with I feel beautiful. Like start to pick up on those little ways that you talk down on yourself every single day and also start to unlearn it and correct it with affirmations of the opposite. And that brings me to one of my last points, which is the way you talk to and treat other people matters so much more than you think it does. The way you talk about other people tells your brain and almost gives your brain permission to talk about yourself like that. Also, I don't know if you believe in karma, but I believe that whatever you are giving out into this world is what you're gonna get back. So when you talk really negatively and judgmentally about other people, you're gonna get that negativity and judgment back, or at least you'll perceive more negativity and judgment back. Because think about it like this. If you think of everyone in very negative, judgmental ways, you're gonna assume that everyone thinks about you in very negative and judgmental ways. But if you think about everyone in a very positive, loving way, you're gonna assume that people think about you in a very positive, loving way. And I am not saying to blindly convince yourself that everyone loves you and is like always gonna talk highly of you. But I am saying that shifting your perspective from the negative in others and shifting on the positive of others, A, it's magnetic, like other people are going to then see the positives in you. But B, when you can shift your mindset from always seeing the negative in others and seeing more in the positive, you're also gonna see that within yourself. You're gonna start to see yourself as more of a worthy, beautiful person if you are speaking about others kindly. So again, a really good way to do this is just kind of catch yourself. Like, what are you saying in your head silently? When you look at someone wearing an outfit, do you think like, oof? Or do you think like, oh, that's cute. You know, if you see someone wearing something different than you would, do you look at them and you think, oh, that outfit is so weird? Or do you think like, oh my gosh, they're so fun and creative. Like, I love that they are wearing something different and out of the box, like that's so fun. When you immediately look at someone, do you look at their flaws? Like, do you immediately see their pimple? or their hair that's out of place? Or do you notice their beauty? Do you notice how cute their freckles are or how nice their eyes look? Like when you see someone, is your first thought something negative or is it something positive? Notice that, notice that first and then start to shift that, start to undo that because if your first thought when you look at someone else is something very negative, most likely your first thought when you look at yourself is also something negative. And again, that's impacting your self-image, which is ultimately gonna impact your self-confidence. Confident people don't tear other people down either to their face or in their brains. Confident people don't need to tear other people down to lift themselves up. They love themselves enough to also be able to love and see the beauty in others. They have no time or space to be worried about what someone else is doing or how bad they look in something or whatever. They have no time or space to be judging others because they're too busy living their best lives and being a confident and magnetic person. Okay, if you are watching the YouTube version of this, I love how this makeup is turning out. Like, 
I'm feeling good. Mindset shifts are so important. So another thing that I think really helps is like gratitude. Um, doing gratitude for the things that you have in your life, but also for different things about yourself. So being grateful for different parts of your personality or being grateful for different parts of your physical appearance. Like just complimenting yourself and being like, oh, I'm so grateful for my eyes. I love my eyes. Or I'm so grateful for my sense of humor. I love my sense of humor. I think that's another really good way to just remind yourself to really embrace that self-love and shift your self-perception. All right, I think that's about it. So in summary, number one, fake it till you make it, okay? You are an actor. You're gonna see how a confident person would react to a situation and embody that. Pretend you're confident, pretend you feel good about yourself, pretend you love yourself until it is true. Wear things that make you feel comfortable and confident. Put on makeup that makes you feel comfortable and confident. Do your hair in a way that makes you feel comfortable and confident. Do those little things every day to make you feel comfortable in your own skin and confident showing up in the world. Speak about yourself kindly, speak about others kindly, and maintain your inner peace. Maintain that sense of peace and tranquility. Those are all my confidence tips. I hoped they helped. Um, we are all consistently on a journey in life of self-love and self-inquiry and self-confidence. And I think you can get your confidence shaken at any point in life, at any age, for any reason, and remembering that there is no one else like you in this world and that you are that bitch. You really are. Like no one else can be you and you get to be the best version of yourself every single day if you choose to be. Show up as your most confident, best self and love yourself because why would anyone else love you if you don't love you? You know, you have to be the person who loves yourself the most and knows yourself the most first. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I had so much fun spending time with you. I hope I see you again shortly. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and turn on the notifications if you liked it. Subscribe to my podcast on different audio platforms. You can follow me on TikTok. I'm very active over there or on Instagram. They are linked below. I hope I see you again next week and have a great rest of your week whenever you're listening to this. Bye. I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.